Hey, what's up garden friends? I am here with a beautiful garden gem, Ruby Andrews of Northern California fame, uh, creator and originator of Maple Rock. Today we are visiting actually uh, Maple Rock 2.0 known as Granite Oaks. Uh, this is a beautiful landscape at Ruby's home. Ruby, can you uh, take us on a little tour to show us your humble little garden? Let's start by going down Frog Lane. Frog Lane has a special frog in it that was made by a friend of mine, and that's where it got its name. But you will see numerous other frogs as we go down the lane. Let's hop on along with us because we are going to go on an adventure. I'm telling you, friends, this video is going to be a treat. This is one of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever been to. No lie. Let's go on a little walk. <laughs> All right. This yeah. looks beautiful, Ruby. Thank you. This is the frog. No shortage of frogs. <laughs> no. This is just a side yard right now, but you can see the depth and the layering of the plants. Look, we have these beautiful Japanese maples giving us a little bit of shade. There are so many different colors in this landscape. So on today's video, look for colors, look for texture, look for all the foliage we're gonna see because this is a very well-grown, well-designed landscape. Oh, beautiful water feature there, Ruby. Yes, that, that gives you some sound. And uh, it just it just kind of works to get you introduced. Yeah, it feels so nice right here too. It's a nice cool, yeah, it's a one cooler. cool spot of our yard. Yeah, a little cooler. It's going to be a warm one today. I'm it's sure. a warm one out here, but you wouldn't know it because the plants are looking really happy. It's a beautiful arbor. We got here a wisteria. Yep, you have your wisteria and a, and a climbing rose that will go over it too. Ooh, I'm loving it already. Take us, take us along. Take us deeper. Okay. Now, how long have you been growing this garden? Uh, 11 years. 11 years. So I know it sounds like a long time, but in landscape terms, that's pretty new. And so it's really remarkable that all the plants look so well established and so happy. But I'm an impatient person. I thought I could do it in two. Hey, hey that's okay. And, and it's 11. Yeah, we, you, you, you did well. You made it. <laughs> how many different trees do you think you have on this landscape right here? And how large is your backyard? Uh, the whole property is 1.2 acres. I have no idea how many trees. I just, I don't count them. Yeah. No, hundreds. I mean, I just add them. Yeah. There's yeah. so many. Yeah. Countless. Are we going up? Please. Okay. Oh, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. So um, if you've ever been to a, this, I would say this landscape is more of a botanical garden than a home garden. This <laughs> is incredible. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I'm blown away, Ruby. This is just absolutely well, it's beautiful. it's kind of fun to get at different elevations because you do see it from a whole different viewpoint. Yeah, you, your topography here is very sloping. There's hill, there are hills, there's big boulders of granite. Um, it's pretty incredible to see. I cannot believe you did all this in just 11 years. <laughs> I thought that was too long. <laughs> yeah, 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 you did good, in my opinion. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Now, I'm noticing a lot of Japanese maples. So, of course, Maple Rock, you know, I'm sure had some maples as well. But you can yes. just see there's so many different colors with these. And I bet they look awesome even in the winter when they go dormant. So I love those bare. Whoa! And this is called the soul of the garden. Whenever I worked with Hiro Matsuda, the minute he saw it, he's kind of a character. He said, I want you to turn it around. And I looked at that and I said, Hiro, that rock is not moving. And then he smiled and said, it's the soul of the garden. And then there is a basin, a granite basin that's about 150 years old. And we have to, in the winter, you see it clearly. This time of year, the grasses kind of go over it. But it's, um, I know there's just little bits and pieces that are kind of fun. I love it. No, you have a really nice balance of uh, utilizing rock and garden art mm -hmm. into your landscape. It's, they're really kind of tucked in there. They seem like they just fit. I'm kind of fussy about what I put in the garden. And I'll go to a garden and I'll see beautiful architectural things. But I don't have all those things. So I use what I have. Love it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, they, everything seems like it's in its right and proper place. Oh, look at all these ferns. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> now the landscape here, it gets a really good mix of, of partial light, dappled light. Um, is there any areas that you know can get full sun in your, in your landscape here? The, well, you'll find in the middle of the garden and down by the house where the flowers bloom, 
It used to get full sun, but even that is changing because the trees have matured and they'll get half a day sun and they're much happier. Yeah. Because have you noticed that with plants? Oh, yes. You know, oh, having yes. better health in any yard that does oh, get yes. partial sun? Yeah. Well, the filtered light, if, if you had a choice, you would say, give me filtered light. Because even the hydrangeas that don't like full sun, they love the filtered light and then they bloom better. And so it's, it's again, very fortunate to have this. But the more trees we put in, the more filtered light we get. Let's so. go look at some more filtered yes. light. Yeah. Oh, I am just blown away, Ruby. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, here's one of my favorite parts of the landscape. Look at this, who doesn't want a massive boulder in their backyard as part of their landscape? Well, and if you walk over there, it's kind of fun because you see a whole different perspective of the whole garden. Yes, oh, we've, we've, we've made it to high ground. Yep. Oh, you can even see the lichen on the rock. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yep. awesome. Yeah, no, you get up here and you look down and you, you see the oh, backs yeah. of things. You guys are gonna have to check this out. But it's okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. look at that. That is isn't gorgeous. That, isn't that pretty? That is absolutely beautiful. Look at the, the coloration, the mm -hmm. variegation on those leaves. And one of the things I love about this landscape is there's so much color out here, but most of it's not even coming from the flowers, although there are plenty of flowers and blooms. Most of the color, if you notice, is it's all from the leaves. Mm -hmm. It's all from your, your, uh, the, land, the, the, foliage. the foliage itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, it really is incredible um, use of color and texture. Oh. Mm -hmm. Look at that, that is, that is one healthy fern. <laughs> oh yeah, some beautiful coleus. Now this is, you know, you, you wouldn't think a little ground cover like this is remarkable, but this is a beautiful ground cover. Can you tell our, our viewers what that is? Well, I landscaped this space two times before I ended up with a grevillea. The grevillea is fan man, and of course it's low going, and Somehow it just loved it here. I imagine the drainage and it likes full sun and it's an Australian plant and so their climate is similar to ours and it's become kind of one of the spots that I show people because they won't see it very many places if any right here. And I love water in the garden so the fountain is special for me uh, and the blue. I, I, you know, you can have color in different ways. That's huh? my favorite color. I, I know. Yeah, well, and good. that one, I just love it right there. We have other waterfalls and things, but this is where we needed another piece of water, you know, a bit of water. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing there's still a lot of flowers still budding up already. That, mm -hmm. that variegated agapanthus looks like it's going to be a be showy. Oh, man. Yeah, this is the, this is the kind of pool I could go swimming in. <laughs> Surrounded by <laughs> this beautiful. On a day like today. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Well, you mentioned earlier when we were talking how you, how you liked um, areas where you normally would use boxwoods, um, but the heat's so extreme here that you swap that out for something different. For the different. Yeah, is that what you and have out here a little yeah, bit? Yeah, the Eonimus here and also in the front by the front porch. Yep. And it, it's just no care. I mean, it's really, really easy. Evergreen shrub, easy to yeah. take care of, and they're mm -hmm. blooming as very, well, and the bees seem to easy. be happy. Right, and then uh, a lot of these plants come back every year. They are, I mean, I'm not planting these. Like I was enjoying the salvia coming back. And if you get plants that suit you, they will just get better and better with time Yeah. in my mind. So what goes through your head when you're designing a landscape like this? What do we have to be considering? Because this is so inspiring um, for those of us who maybe don't have the space, but still can have a smaller garden that is just as packed um, with some delightful well, things figure out a direction in the sense of is it color, is it texture, is it both? You know, whatever it is you want, you can do. And you may do it in a very small scale, but that's fine. I mean, it's it's more just doing it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Now we're getting into like the, uh, an area of your landscape that I think might be one of my favorite spots. And what's really cool about this garden is that everywhere you go, there is a different landscape, I feel like. There's like these little pocket gardens. <laughs> a with, lot of rooms. Yes, and they all have personality. Um, it feels like, at least when I go up into each one, mm -hmm. they, um, like this one right here, seems like this would be a great place to go calm down. Check this out. Oh, and here's what I'm talking about, all the different colors and the textures. This is a, just an incredible example of what you can do. Even with a smaller space, you can still find ways to pull in plants that are gonna do the same thing. Oh. Look at that fuchsia, it's gorgeous, Ruby. Yeah, isn't it? This is kind of fun up here. Yeah, show me. This oh, is... yeah. another water feature.
So this was a, a beautiful handmade uh, water feature put in how many years ago? Uh, probably nine. Yeah. Well, it's, it's running nicely. Yeah. It looks No, Hero proper. Matsuda did this for us. And uh, he hand laid all of the rock. And then, you know, you just keep working with it. It may be hard to see on video, but there is a beautiful canopy uh, above our heads right now. There are oak trees, what, scrub oaks you mentioned. Um, there's even some redwood trees around it. So we have this beautiful canopy that kind of you know, creates a stage for us. It creates a little bit of shade. And then you have this beautiful understory of all your maples and your dogwoods and whatnot mm -hmm. underneath it. And there's one plant, can you tell us a little bit about that I've been really stoked on? <laughs> and it's right here uh, to Ruby's right. It's just such a beautiful plant. This is Cousin It. And it is supposed to be about a three or four foot high shrub. But when they started growing here, they decided they wanted to be trees. So we just pruned it up as a tree because everything under it was being killed because it was on top of it. And so it's the cousin it's, a, it's an acacia cousin it. Beautiful, so, yeah. look at that, I love it. And they're yeah. all over, they're dotted all over the, the landscape here, yeah. the hillside, and they really just add some- They just, thrive here. They're really interesting. Yeah. It's like Snuffleupagus or something out yeah. here. So Ruby, I'm having a blast in your yard. Is it okay if I kind of go wander off alone and uh, just do a little exploration? Absolutely, and you'll find things and just ask questions later. Thank you, all right, go time to go explore. Go explore. Woo! Ruby, I just want to thank you so much for allowing us to come in and take a tour of your just amazing landscape. I am just blown away by you and all of your work. So th hats off to you and thank you so much. You're very welcome. Anytime you're welcome.